Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Nadia and this is This Week in Sex. So This Week in Sex, a survey by sex toy company Lelo has revealed something that is probably not going to be a surprise to a lot of you. And that is the fact that since lockdowns and quarantine took effect, people started masturbating more. In fact, in a survey of over 2,000 UK adults over the age of 18, they found that more than half of people reported masturbating at least once a day. And almost 20% of people said that they were masturbating three or more times times a day every day. I mean, seriously, more power to you if you can find that amount of time in your day to masturbate. Interestingly enough, one of the most common questions I get on this channel is people asking me if there is such a thing as too much masturbation. So if you fit into one of the 20% of people who were masturbating three or more times a day, I'm here to put your mind at ease and tell you, you cannot masturbate too much. Masturbation is simply touching your own body and for that reason, there's no danger to it. Now, you can obviously add risk in if you are touching your body with different objects, particularly objects which aren't safe. I recommend purchasing a sex toy that is designed specifically for masturbation and not just using random household objects. So what do you think, Perry? Well, no, I'll tell you there, Bobo. Either this kid has a light bulb up his butt or his colon has a great idea. Although on that note, if you are strapped for cash and you need to make your own sex toy, I did make a video about how to do that and I'll link that up here but otherwise you can masturbate away and you can do it absolutely guilt-free nothing bad is going to happen guys if you masturbate three or more times a day now as for how much I have been masturbating during quarantine well the answer is wouldn't you like to know you dirty dirty people let's get on to the next story in sex <laughs> People on TikTok are going wild at the moment about coffee and the apparent orgasm benefits of it. Now, this is a trend that really took off after one particular TikToker put out a video basically saying that if they consume coffee before they have sex, that they have a more powerful orgasm. I just found out that if you drink coffee before sex, it intensifies your orgasm by 50%. Oh yeah. So basically, anybody that's against your coffee addiction should be burned by the stake. It wasn't long before more TikTokers were following suit and putting out their own TikTok videos saying the same thing. They were saying that they tried drinking coffee directly before doing the deed and they noticed that they were having way more powerful orgasms. I don't think you could get more stronger than this. That was solid. Just gonna do some jumping jacks to get the blood flowing, you know? Okay, give me five minutes. Five minutes. That was wild. So, obviously, lots of people want to know, is this just a TikTok trend or is there actually some science behind this? Well, guys, I am going to just be transparent and say I am not a doctor, so please do not replace anything I say with proper medical advice. But drinking coffee before sex isn't going to harm you, so there's certainly no problem in trying it. I don't recommend drinking a ton of coffee. Some of the people that were trying out this trend were drinking multiple shots of espresso before they were having sex to try to get the benefits. And if you have a lot of coffee, you can end up with enzymes anxiety and you can get a racing heart which doesn't feel too nice so limit yourself to no more than three cups a day and try to space them out and don't have them before bed or you won't be able to sleep now in terms of the science around it coffee is known as a vasodilator and basically what that means is it encourages increased blood flow often what it does is it encourages increased blood flow to the brain and so that's why a lot of people tend to reach for a cup of coffee when they need to concentrate at work or they're studying for an exam or they just need to be focused in some way. Now it can also theoretically increase blood flow to other areas of the body. And so yes, it could potentially make you more sensitive down there if you down an espresso directly before getting it on. But the studies to actually like really prove this are pretty limited. Pretty much the only real sort of bit of research there is, it was done on rats and they did find that when they gave rats caffeine, they were more horny, they were having more sex. Now does coffee make human beings more horny? I don't know if it does, could it make sex better? 
better? Could it make orgasms better? Maybe slightly. It's worth giving it a go. And look, I'm probably gonna go and try it myself now because I'm pretty intrigued. If you have ever drunk coffee and then had sex straight away and thought to yourself, that felt better than usual, then I would be interested to know. Let me know in the comment section down below. I think we'll all be interested to know. <laughs> And then in far more serious sex news, actor Army Hammer, who I spoke about a few weeks ago on this channel after he had his whole scandal around having some very salacious kinky texts revealed that seemed to indicate that he might be into cannibalism, but that maybe that was actually not what he was really into. It was maybe just a kink and there was a whole lot of people speculating around it. Well, it turns out that there might be a bit of a darker side to some of what was leaked publicly because he is actually now under investigation by LAPD sex crime detectives. Now, we don't know the full details of this, but what we do know is that a woman has come forward who has been identified as Effie and she basically said that he had assaulted her. Now, before I give any more information about this, I do want to give a trigger warning. If you are someone who is easily affected by discussion of sexual assault, then maybe just flick to the end of this video or just go on and watch one of my other videos. So Evie appeared alongside her attorney, Gloria Allred, to talk about the assault. And basically she indicated that it went on for four hours, allegedly according to what she has come out and said. And during that time, she talks about having her head repeatedly slammed against a wall and having her feet beaten with a crop and feeling too scared to leave. In the call, she is quoted as saying, I tried to get away, but he wouldn't let me. I thought he was going to kill me. He then left me with no concern for my well-being. I was completely in shock and couldn't believe someone I loved did that to me. I tried so hard to justify his actions, even to the point of responding to him in a way that did not reflect my true feelings. I also think what's really interesting about this case is the woman at the center of it, Effie has talked about the fact that a woman should have the right to withdraw consent at any time during a sexual encounter. Now, this would seem to be just a basic common sense, but it really, unfortunately, very sadly, seems to be something that we still need to be talking about and we still need to be educating people about is this whole idea that consent is not just saying yes and consent is not just taking your clothes off. Consent is not even having oral sex. Just because someone has oral sex with you does not mean they want to have penetrative sex or just because someone has penetrative sex with you doesn't mean they want to have other kinds of sex. And I think this is really something that we tend to really leave out of the discussion around consent. We don't talk about the more sort of subtle levels of consent and the fact that consent needs to be something which is ongoing. It needs to be something that happens through about sex. Now, obviously, if you're engaging in any kind of BDSM scene, which could involve a fantasy of having sex with someone, quote unquote, against your will, if it's a true BDSM scene, then this should have been prepared before anything happened. People who are actual proper practitioners of BDSM do not just go ahead and handcuff people up and start whipping them with a crop. They have a full discussion that happens before any kind of sex activity takes place where both parties agree to the exact things that they are comfortable with doing and all of the things that they're not comfortable with doing. And then if they are playing out a non-consensual sexual encounter, they will make safe words, which mean I want to stop. And so that's basically there because someone might be screaming, no, I don't want it, but they really mean, yes, I do, because that's what's been agreed on as part of the BDSM scene. So they might have a word that doesn't belong in a sex scene, something like pineapple, which they can blurt out at any time to let their partner know, no, I actually really want you to stop. I need to take a break. And so I, I think it's really important to acknowledge that because I think often BDSM tends to get a bad rap as seen as, oh, people that want to practice kink, they're really just people that want to do really harmful things to other people. But this isn't the case. If Army Hammer is truly exploring BDSM and kink and he has held someone against their will, then that is not BDSM and kink. That is going against all of the practices of everything that BDSM stands for. BDSM is hugely focused around 
clear communication and really detailed communication. In fact, people in the BDSM community have arguably much more detailed conversations about sex and all of the things that are going to happen during a sexual encounter and all of the things that they don't want to happen than probably just most married couples. But also I want to read out a statement that Effie's lawyer Gloria Allred said about this idea of withdrawing consent. If she does withdraw her consent and ask her partner to stop for any reason, he is legally and morally obligated to stop. If he does not stop, he is then at risk of committing a crime against her. And the reason I wanted to share this statement is because while I completely and wholeheartedly agree with it, I agree that someone should be morally and legally are drawn to stop as soon as someone lets uh, their sexual partner know that they no longer are enjoying what they're participating in and they want to stop. Unfortunately, laws around withdrawing consent are still really ambiguous. And it's something that I talked about recently in another This Week in Sex video, which is basically the fact that laws more often than not actually protect the people who perpetrate sexual abuse. So even here in Australia, where I live, if a person really believes that they have consent when they are having sex with someone based on that person's body language or nonverbal cues or even verbal cues, then that person essentially is seen as not having committed a crime. Even if the actual victim says, no, I was violated, I did not want that. And so I think it's really important that if you're having sex with someone, you are having this clear communication and that you are actually looking for those signs of ongoing consent. And this isn't a complex issue. If someone's enjoying sex with you, it will be so obvious. They will be smiling. They will be moaning in pleasure. They will be saying things like, yes, keep going more. I like it like that. Go harder, go faster. They will give all indication that they're enjoying it. If someone freezes up, if someone is going completely silent, if someone sounds or looks like they're in pain, that is a very strong indicator that they don't want to be having the sex that they're having with you. Or at the very least, they maybe need to take a break and you maybe need to renegotiate what you do. Maybe whatever it is you're doing isn't comfortable for them and you need to move to something else. Those are my thoughts on that. I'm keen to hear your comments in the comment section down below. As always though, this is a really serious topic and so I do ask you to be super respectful when you talk about it. If there are any disrespectful comments, particularly comments which are disrespectful toward victims of sexual assault, then I will be deleting those. So just keep that in mind, guys. And on that note, that was This Week in Sex. Sorry to end it on such a dark note, but I will see you guys all in the next video. Mwah.